companies from the banks or from a financial institutions are way ahead as compared to what they charge the large businesses. And I understand there is a higher risk over there. So this is the, this is the story we hear from the SME units. When we go to the banks and we try and understand why is there is a, are the banks not willing to lend? The clear answer is, of course, we want to lend to the SMEs. So there is a willing borrower and there's a willing lender, but yet the two don't come together so easily. So if we come to the banker's perspective, the main issues are opacity of the SME, the absence of credit information system, reliable collaterals, weak creditor rights, and the legal environment, which actually GCC is not so bad in the last two ones as compared to the non-GCC. On the right side, there are three main boxes where the bankers have a problem. The risk side, where because of the opacity and the lack of information, they're forced to take decisions and take higher risks. The cost to serve an SME is much higher than the cost to serve a large unit because there are multiple transactions and much of much smaller ticket value. And the amount of fees that they can also eke out of the SMEs is not good enough, even though it's almost 100% higher than the larger firms. So in this whole vicious cycle, the bankers feel that they are not really getting a good business deal. And banks are here to make money, as we all understand. So is it SMEs versus bankers? I think both of them are on the same path, like we said, that there is a willing borrower and there is a willing lender. The main issue that seems to be coming in the way right now, or amongst the most important issue that's coming, is the information gap. The bank has really no access to the credit payment behavior of, a, of an SME. An SME feels that I have been paying but all my bills on time, but the banker is not willing to give me any better risk pricing because of my good track record. And those things will be answered only when there is a, a credit bureau fully functioning. SMEs in particular, there's a lot of overlap between the consumer and his business. So the SME uses sometimes his own personal advances to be running the business. So till we do not have the same individual's credit history or credit score available, it's going to be extremely difficult for the banks to be able to do a proper risk pricing and to decide whom to give at better lending rates and whom adverse. Right now it is more generic. If you're an SME, you will be charged an X rate. So they're not able to differentiate the good from the not so good SMEs. So essentially, I think it's one of absence of information, absence of credit information. It gets compounded because of the financial literacy levels of an SME, which also has to be taken up uh, many notches. But at the heart of all this to begin with is the credit information gap. The credit information gap can be bridged by an SME credit rating tool, and I'll talk a bit more about SME credit rating in a moment about our experience. We all know that a credit rating tool is more of a financial tool in terms of how, how will the banker be able to do a differentiation in the risk pricing, what kind of terms can the SME expect based on his financial credit rating. But apart from a financial tool, a credit rating is also a very important marketing tool. It helps build up a CV for the SME. It helps in being able to talk much more confidently with, the, with his partners, with his potential suppliers, with government agencies, with banks. It helps a lot in the self-improvement. He understands where he should be doing better, etc. So there's a very, very strong need to have a culture to start appreciating why it is good to have credit ratings in an economy, both from a financial perspective as well as a non-financial perspective. But will credit rating solve the problems? I think it is an integral part of the bigger financial infra infrastructure ecosystem that any economy has to prepare, has to create. It involves a credit bureau where you get the trade tape program where people know how each of us is paying the other. Of course, with all the sensitive information being uh, taken out of that. It has to be supported by certain credit guarantee schemes by the government. I know some of our colleagues here said it should be purely private, but there is a case for the government also stepping in and 
trying to give it the first support uh, scheme. In India, they started a company called CGTS ME. That's a credit, credit guarantee scheme. In the last 10 years, they have, they have lent to 400,000 companies, $4 billion, and their NPAs are the lowest amongst any banks. Yeah. The same rate of interest are charged, in fact, slightly subsidized as compared to what the banks charge, but it has been extremely successful. Financial reporting standards. Till there are no financial reporting standards that they don't need to straight away be at a very high level for SMEs, but somewhere the first beginning has to be made. Because still there are not financial reporting standards, how will a company be able to do any proper credit rating? Start of finance, private equity, et cetera, all this have to be part of the bigger uh, ecosystem. And of course, credit rating will form a very in important part of that. Once again, the credit ratings, we've started our experience in credit ratings has been in two markets only. Both are very difficult markets, India and Bangladesh. I mean, when I look at SMEs in those markets versus SMEs here, it's almost like a transition from red tape to red carpet. You know, I mean, the SMEs here are so much better off. So we set up, we've set up two companies, uh, one in India and one in Bangladesh, in public-private partnership. We have partnered with the government, we've partnered with the banks. In the last four years, we have rated about 30,000 entities. Who, and we are yet to start seeing the statistical benefits, but I'm sure over the next two, three years, we will start seeing those. But these are specifically directed only to SMEs. This is not the regular ratings that are done, rating of debt, et cetera. These are only focused to SMEs. And I think there is a lot of learning, not that those models can be implanted over here, but we have to start moving in that direction. We have to start educating the market, and it will have to evolve over a period of time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rajesh. Uh, just for your information, uh, Dubai SME will be tying up with the IFRS for SMEs uh, with the UK to launch a program in September 27 to 29. All uh, interested parties are encouraged to apply and attend. It's a trainer trainer program. So with your skill sets, you can go out to the market to train SMEs on how to prepare uh, their accounts based on the IFRS standards. Finally, we have Nick Nidal. Uh, from Haukama to present something on corporate governance for SMEs. Uh, here's the last presentation before we adjourn for a Q&A. And after that, a sumptuous lunch awaits you. Uh, Nick, please. So because of that sumptuous lunch that's being promised to you, I'll try to make this uh, presentation as brief as possible so we can go into the Q&A and enjoy the sumptuous lunch. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank, uh, the, uh, congratulate the Dubai SME for launching this particular initiative. Um, as a corporate governance institute, um, we are delighted that these kinds of initiatives in Dubai and also in the region um, are trying to engage the SME sector in trying to push for corporate governance, greater corporate transparency, and, and whatnot. Let me just give you a few minutes on, actually one minute, um, on Haukama. Haukama was started as an initiative by uh, the Dubai International Financial Center, the OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the World Bank Global Corporate Governance Forum, IFC, the International Finance Corporation, Union of Arab Banks, Young Arab Leaders, as an initiative to bridge the corporate governance gap in the region, in the MENA region. So over the past five years that we've, uh, we've existed, we've endeavored to frame the discussions on corporate governance and transparency and disclosure among the banks, listed companies, state-owned enterprises, um, insurance companies, private equity. Um, and as you could imagine, the SME sector in this region, as um, Alexander pointed out earlier this morning, 95% of, of Dubai companies are SMEs. So engaging the SMEs is a very important part of what we're trying to do. So my presentation this morning will lay out the business case for corporate governance and SMEs, share with you some principles that need to be taken into account to at least have a basic corporate governance framework, and then um, talk about a little bit about some of what we're planning on doing with Dubai SMEs. So let's start with uh, definitions. This is basically the first bullet point here is a definition of the OECD on corporate governance. It's a lot of words. 
But in essence, what it is, is um, you need, uh, uh, corporate governance is about uh, the structures of relationships between investors, boards, managers, and stakeholders with the ultimate goal of enhancing shareholder and stakeholder value. So if you look at conventional wisdom and corporate governance, a lot of people say that corporate governance is only for